Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Love Joy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If this is your first time here, welcome. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so that way you can be aware of the other videos that I create in the future. And in today's video, we're going to paint this really cool tiger's eye. And with this video and any video that I produce, I do encourage that if you want to change colors, feel free to do that. If you want to make a white tiger or even a brown tiger or a purple tiger, feel free to switch out the colors that I use. If you have any concerns or questions, just send me an email or leave a comment below. So in the description box below, what you're going to see is a link to a supply kit. And that supply kit is everything that you need for this particular painting and the colors that I use for this painting. You're also going to see an angled brush in that supply kit. I introduced that into this video. And if you don't have an angled brush or you don't want to purchase something extra, you can do the exact same brush strokes that I'm going to talk about with a flat brush. So again, don't feel like you have to purchase something unless you want to. Uh, another thing that you're going to see in the description box below is a link to a traceable. And a traceable is a way for my beginner and first time painters to get their initial composition on the canvas before you even start painting. And it takes away some of the difficulty of trying to draw freehand and some of the intimidating factors of getting started painting. So if you are new to the painting process, check those out, acquire your traceable, and then also check out the video on how to transfer your traceable to your canvas. And then move on to the next portion of the video. With this video and all the videos that I produce, relax, just have a good time. This is not the end of the world. We're not paying rent. We're not paying bills with anything that you paint right now. Maybe one day you will, you never know. Um, but this is just supposed to be a therapeutic process at a creative time for you. Um, you will find that the more that you paint, you will get more comfortable and you will have more confidence as you move forward with understanding how the paint works and how to hold your brushes. So again, this is just practice, just for fun and enjoy the process. All right, so enough talking, let's get into painting. All right, guys, I hope you're ready to paint. Head on over to where you have your supplies. Uh, make sure you turn on your favorite music and get all your supplies together. All right, as always, make sure you take your progress photos. And once you have your image transferred uh, from your traceable to your canvas or your panel, you're gonna grab your small pointy brush and we're gonna outline um, all the images, uh, all the lines, all the shapes that you transferred to your canvas or your panel. And we're going to be using black paint for this entire uh, section. Now as you're applying your paint uh, right now, I want you to kind of get comfortable with the brush. Notice the pressure of your brush. Try pushing a little bit harder to make a wider line. And try using a little bit lighter pressure to make a skinnier line. Again, you're just kind of increasing your comfort level. And here you can see when I got to the pupil, I did fill in the pupil, but left the space for kind of a square looking catch light. If you happen to paint over that, don't worry about it. We can reapply uh, the white paint on top of that once your black dries. So as you paint today, and as you kind of take any painting class, especially with acrylic paint, um, keep in mind, that anything that you don't like, you can paint right on top of it again. So you just let your paint dry and put another layer of paint on top of it. So with that being said, I'm gonna encourage you to trust your instincts when you paint. Your instincts are naturally gonna be guiding you in the correct direction. And trust those. If you paint something you don't like, just let it dry and paint right on top of it again. Because painting's more about just kind of finding the space to relax for you and kind of have just your own conversation with the canvas. I tell all my students in class that there is no right or wrong way to paint. The only way to fail at painting is to not paint at all. Now on your tiger, if you would like to add stripes in places that I did not put them, feel free to add more or less. 
And I want you to pause the video, take your progress photo of your painting, and we're going to be moving into the fl small flat brush, and we're going to be mixing orange with our burnt umber. And we're basically going for a really kind of dark, kind of muddy, kind of brownish color. And again, I want you to utilize the pause section of these videos. And when you pause the video, I want you to take a look at where I applied the color and the shapes that those colors uh, make where I applied them. And do your best just to kind of mimic or come close to that shape or that general area. You have complete permission to deviate from the path and go in a different direction. Like I said, trust your instincts and just have fun. Now in this painting, um, and a lot of my beginner uh, video paintings, I am using student grade acrylic paint. I'm using your Liquitex Basics. And because it's student grade, it is a little bit more transparent than the artist grade paint. So if you are using student grade paint today and your paint's kind of coming out transparent like mine is right here, you have a couple of options. You can either apply your paint a little bit thicker or you can apply a second layer once this, this uh, first coat has dried. So don't, like I said earlier, don't be afraid to layer paint um, to increase the density, to increase the contrast, to even increase the opacity of your painting. And as we apply the brush strokes here, we are just kind of using fat brush strokes and it's almost like they're little dash marks. And everything below the eye is going to generally have a direction uh, from uh, left to right corners. It's kind of a diagonal. And then everything above the eye seems to kind of be going in a slightly opposite diagonal direction. And these particular line mark directions uh, just kind of draw the focus more to the eye of our tiger. And you will see me use a bit more dots down the center to the left of the eye of our tiger um, as I fill in that space. But again, feel free to experiment with different brush strokes. Um, if you want to do a bunch of dots that are overlapping and a bit more of a pointillistic style, if you want to finger paint this image, go right ahead. Like I said, I want you to just kind of relax as you paint this. If you have anything that has stressed you out during the week, put it into the paint, put it into your brush strokes, and hopefully you are much more relieved and relaxed by the time you are done painting. With that being said right now, if you are holding your breath, please take a deep breath for me. We do tend to do that uh, when we're trying something for the first time or we're a little bit nervous and uh, just kind of a nice point to just relax, laugh a little bit, don't take yourself too seriously as we're painting, and just enjoy the process. We're already filling up quite a bit of this canvas space. It's looking really good. And if you wanted to make a white tiger, you are more than welcome to switch out these colors with shades of gray. Uh, this color here would be a dark gray and then our next color will move into a lighter gray. And then the next color after that, just keep going lighter. If you want to do a white tiger, we will be making an orange one in this video. <laughs> All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're going to keep with that same small flat brush and straight orange paint and again this is student grade paint so you will see me kind of glob it on here i don't use a whole lot of water when i use my acrylics i actually like the thickness of it and for a beginner and first time painter i do recommend that you apply your paint a little bit thicker than you may be comfortable with this thickness of application is going to keep the paint wet and moist a little bit longer for you and you'll be able to do a little bit of blending um, compared to applying it a little bit thinner it's going to dry out very very quickly so again just kind of find your comfort level and you're communicating with your brush and your paint and just kind of what you know you're capable of doing with it and 
as everything in life, the more you practice, the more you paint, the better and more comfortable you become with your tools. So I'm proud of you for taking the time right now to sit and paint. It takes a lot of courage to paint at home. So I hope you are proud of yourself. And hopefully you have a nice supportive family and friends that enjoys what you are painting and encourages you. And maybe they're even painting with you. It is more fun when you have some friends and laughter and just kind of spend quality time not in front of an electronic device uh, compared to just watching the video as you guys go along. <laughs> I realize the irony of that. All right, so again, we're still using the orange paint, filling up a good portion of the space. Uh, basically, the rest of the space, uh, except where we're going to have the white of the fur uh, above the eye. Again, with this video, we are actually going to be putting two layers on this painting. Right now, we're getting to the underpainting. Uh, when we get to the top coat, uh, uh, we'll be using an angled brush, or you can use your flat brush. And we'll be making skinnier lines, but still in the direction that the fur is growing. And kind of the angled marks in various directions. So again, you're just creating your underpainting right now. And pausing the video to take your progress photo. Alright, so now we're going to be adding some yellow and orange together. And you can, your degree of yellow that you add can vary. Uh, the, you'll notice that the yellow actually gets eaten up pretty quickly in the orange, so be, be generous when you're adding the yellow to your mixture. You may even get to the point where you just grab that yellow directly, that straight yellow, and paint it right on top of your orange wet paint on your canvas. And you'll notice that as you blend, move your brush, the two kind of blend together. So again, just kind of play with that. <clears throat> All right, you're doing a good job. Take a deep breath, just in case you forgot, or just in case you needed to right now. <laughs> this is looking good. All right, so now we're going to make a light gray. So we're taking some white with a touch of black. Oh, so you're going to pause the video, take your progress photo. And we're going to make a light gray we're going to take a little bit of white, add a touch of black, and again, we're still using that small flat brush and just making small little dots or dash marks. And we're going to start breaking up and give some shadow to where our white fur is going to be. And even here, you'll notice that I overlap some of the black areas on the painting. I overlap some of the um, orange. Completely okay. Don't feel like you have to stay within the lines. I do want you overlapping these colors. Get expressive. Get sloppy. Sloppy is actually a really good style in painting. <laughs> uh, if you have to make your shade of gray a second time, don't stress about getting the exact same shade. Uh, we will be putting white paint on top of this and breaking up these shades. All right, so now we're going for the dark gray. So again, just adding a little bit more black to the gray mixture we were just using. And we're going to fill in the space around the eyes. And again, I overlapped the black. You don't have to stay within the lines perfectly. Staying within the lines is quite overrated anyway. All right. We filled up the space quickly. All right, so pause the video. Take your progress photo. And we're going to move into yellow paint and the small pointy brush. And I want you to take the straight yellow paint and we're going to fill in that entire eye space. And then we're going to be adding some shadows with a dry brush on top of this yellow paint. Again, this is good practice for blending and good practice for your brush control and brush comfort level. All right, and again, I applied this kind of thick, so feel free that kind of like icing a cake, you can smooth out some of those areas, some of those paint peaks. And again, if you overlap the black, don't worry about it. You're doing a good job. All 
All right, so now we're going to take that yellow with a little bit of our uh, burnt umber. And we're going to very lightly place that on the top of the yellow color, the eye color, and around the pupil. And again, that yellow paint is very wet and very thick, so it doesn't take a whole lot of my darker color uh, to start changing that shade of yellow. So less is more in this area. Start with just maybe a few little dots of that darker color and then work it into the wet yellow paint. If you get too oversaturated with this, just take a paper towel or your finger and wipe this color off um, and reapply your yellow and just repeat the steps but with less of your darker color. This is again that kind of back and forth communication that you're having with your tools and your brush strokes. So again, wipe that brush off, get it kind of dry, and we're going to take some white paint and paint right on top of the bottom part of the eye and mix it in with the yellow base color that we have. And again, by kind of wiping your brush off and with a dry brush, uh, you have less of the fluid paint or even water that's going to blend it, and you're using just the pressure of your brush. So if your brush starts to get kind of muddled, wipe it off again, and then go back to your blending. Don't stress out about this. You will develop a good communication and kind of understand this a little bit more the more that you do this. If this is your first time doing this type of blending, be kind to yourself. And again, the progress pictures are really important to have a visual documentation of the journey that you're going through as you paint. So keep these progress photos and in a year from now when you've painted other images or you come back and maybe paint this again, you will see how much you have grown and it's very humbling to have that kind of documentation uh, for your growth. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. And now we're gonna move on to white paint and kind of fill in the rest of our space where our white fur is. We will be overlapping a little bit of the gray and even the black. And we're using uh, that small flat brush. If you happen to be working on a larger canvas, feel free to use a larger brush. Adjust to the size that you have. And if you happen to pick up some of your color from the surrounding areas into your white paint, just wipe your brush off and reapply. Don't freak out if you get other colors mixed in with the white. You, like I said, you have permission to be a little sloppy today while you paint. It's more fun that way. And the more that you learn, then you can get a little bit more controlled. All right, and here I'm actually making a few new spaces, so feel free to adjust your painting as you need to. Again, trusting those instincts. And even though as I'm applying that white on top, it is picking up a little bit of the gray. And because my paint is still wet, I am softening and blending a few of those areas. So again, don't fight this if this is happening in your painting as well. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. You have completed the underpainting. All right, so now we're gonna go to that angled brush. And if you don't have an angled brush, you can just use your flat brush. Um, but the angled brush, we're going to be moving our brush in the direction of the fur. And we're going to be using black paint going over all the areas um, that we originally did with our traceable image. And with this black paint and having these kind of skinny lines overlapping some of our other colors, it's going to give us a really nice fur texture. And as I'm making these uh, dash marks, I'm not using a whole lot of pressure with my brush. I'm actually just using just the end of the angled brush. Because again, the harder you push your brush against the canvas, the wider the line it's going to make. As you start to get in this groove of making all these dash marks, uh, every now and then wipe your brush off and bring your bristles back to more center. Because as you keep loading the paint on, it's going to widen the brush and just kind of expand the bristles. So again, every now and then, wipe the paint off, reshape your bristles back to their original shape, 
and start again. Uh, you are going to be overlapping these dash marks, overlapping the other colors, overlapping um, each of these black individual brush strokes. Again, each of these brush strokes is like a strand of fur on our tiger. And you can go back and forth with this process that we're going to be doing for the remaining portion of the video as many times as you want. The whole, all three videos in the eye series is really good for the layering of your brush strokes and getting comfortable with the pressure of your brush. All right, this guy's starting to really come alive. All right. Take your progress photo and pause the video. And every now and then, make sure you get out of your chair and walk five to 10 feet away from your painting and look at it from a distance. All right, so we're still using the angled brush or your flat brush. And we're going back to that uh, burnt umber and orange color that we used in the very beginning. We're basically repeating all of our colors. Keeping with that same brush stroke, those little dash marks that are overlapping each other and overlapping the other colors. And again, notice the different angles that I'm going. It's kind of radiating around the top of the eye, below the eye, it's kind of a uh, diagonal brush stroke, and then down the center where his nose would be more of a uh, vertical brush stroke that we're going for. Again, all in the direction that the fur is moving. All right, doing a good job. I hope you're nice and relaxed. Oh, another reason why the progress pictures are so important. So the next time that you take your progress photo, study, like right now, take your progress photo, and I want you to study it on your phone. And the same thing, uh, when you look at your uh, painting on your phone, it's the same thing as looking at your painting from 20 feet away without getting out of your chair. So another tool to utilize as you're going through this process. All right, so here we're still doing the exact same thing with the angled brush or your flat brush, but now we're onto our orange paint and overlapping some of these other colors, overlapping the orange paint, Again, trust your instincts. If you feel like you want to put some of these colors uh, more heavy handed in an area that I don't put them in, go right ahead. Your painting is relative to you. All right, and keep going. Don't stop until you're done with the painting. We're going to be going through all those colors one more time. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo, check out how everything looks. And here, still using that angled brush, I'm actually just going to grab that straight yellow paint. And I'm kind of placing this on thick and not moving my brush a whole lot because I want more of this yellow to have a bit more contrast and pop a little bit more. So just kind of place your brush and move on to the next spot. Because as you saw in your in the first step, first section, that that yellow got eaten up by the orange paint very quickly. So again, glob this kind of on there, pretty thick, and don't move your brush too much. And after this step, I definitely want you to get out of your chair and walk 10 feet away from your painting and look at it from that distance. And again, just take note of the change, what you see differently from that distance compared to up close while you're painting. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. We're going to go back to the eye and do some more details. So we're going to take our small pointy brush and black paint and we're going to go over the pupil again and outline the eye and just kind of clean up some of these edges. Again, notice the pressure of your brush. 
And if you kind of treat your pointy brush almost like it's a pencil using just the tip of it, you'll gain really good brush control with practice. As you're using the black paint, if you need to add a touch of water to it to help the fluidity, feel free to do that. I wouldn't, you never want to add more than 30% water to your paint. And kind of a general rule of thumb is you never want your brush dripping wet with water. All right, so we're going to finish up with some extra highlights on the eyes next after our black paint. All right, so now we're taking dark gray, going back to kind of where the inside parts of the eye are, and a few little dots and just kind of some random little marks on top of the black and the darker shades of gray. Right, pause the video and take your progress photo and we're going to make a light gray and again these are just kind of choppy little brush strokes they don't have to be perfect but when we pause the video just kind of notice where they are at and if you need to reapply that catch light because you painted over it that little square that's overlapping the black and the yellow feel free to reapply that with pure white right now all right, pause the video, take your progress photo. And we're going to go back to white paint and the angled brush and fill in more of our white areas of the fur and a few more highlights. We are in the home stretch of the painting. You have done a great job and I hope you are so much more relaxed and even eager to paint something else tomorrow or next month. I do recommend that you do something creative at least once a month in your life. It is much needed and very therapeutic and, and just good for you to do. So please try to find a way to incorporate that into your world. All right, amazing how much that white, and again, oh, you can apply that white kind of thick, how it makes some of that darker shades just pop nicely. All right, guys, thanks so much for painting with me today. I'm always honored that you take time out of your day um, and spend an hour or two or longer painting with me. So I look forward to painting with you again and keep on finding your creative outlets. Have a great day. Cheers. Hey, guys, I hope your tiger eyes turned out really cool. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me, Paint with Lovejoy, or send me an email of your painting, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. When I see your guys' work or you send me an email, it really gives me a lot of fuel and a lot of encouragement to keep making these videos because I realize people are actually going through the process of painting. So please don't be shy and share some of your creations with me. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Um, it helps me grow. It helps me get a little bit bigger. Share this channel with your friends. Pass it on to anybody that you feel might benefit from it. Um, all right. Again, thanks for spending time with me. I look forward to painting with you in the future. Have a great day. Cheers. Uh, blah, 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 let's do that over again. As we work on this video, we are going to... Yeah, why am I having trouble with this one? This is the last one. I'm gonna wait for the plane. <laughs>